Welcome back, it is Thursday, that means acting analysis fighting meters. And today we're gonna to take a look at the fantastic show on HBO called Chernobyl. That's right, it is fantastic. It's in fact so good, I love everything about it. The music is great, the sound design is fantastic. The cast, the acting, the composition, the colors, just everything is so good. Actually, I have so much to talk about that I'm gonna do a series for every episode. So it's gonna be episode one, two, three, four, five, because I can't talk about everything. It will be hours, it will be hours. But anyway, so there's a long list for episode one. Let's get straight to the clips. First up is this tiny little thing here as he prepares the tapes and wants to roll them up or does roll them up up in newspaper here. What I love about this is that it's just slightly off. What he stops and corrects. Now, besides prop handling, that's always interesting to me uh, in terms of animation, but it's just an interesting detail that if you do have a character and there are props in the scene and they're aligned or it's something like a book or something where anything where you can show off that the character is very particular about details. I think it's just an interesting character moment. It doesn't have to be so on display. It can be a tiny thing like one of the previous uh, acting analysis that I did where the character just adjusts the shoes. And because she is so picky about this, she knows that a book is kind of misplaced. So there are little things that you can push in terms of character for a sequence, but just as a title thing here, I like this. Next up after the incident, the explosion occurred and it, I love this here. I love the introduction of the character and what the camera does and the change of composition. Now you could technically cut out that middle part, but what I wanna show you here is how it ends. So A, you have somewhat of a full body, you know, a full body kind of a waist up thing, but still can show a lot. It's a bit more about body posture and silhouette and everything. And then you have an intro of the second character. He just kind of comes in as he was sleeping, but you can argue that maybe in your shot, the character can stumble in or run in, or maybe you know, someone something happens in and pushes off the door, or maybe still it comes in from the outside and there's a coat on and takes the coat off or whatever you want to do. But I think it's cool that you have one character here and because so much is empty here, you expect another character to enter. So I think it's a cool, two character setup and I like how it goes from this to that. And you can show this through just a simple pan, follow to the characters, and then you can show off full body, somewhat full body, right? <laughs> body mechanics to facial close up. It's also interesting, we can see both of them, but it's mainly that is in focus, although that with the hair you won't see much, but it's something that you can obviously tweak, So, but still you can show off multiple things in terms of body mechanics and then get into a close-up. I think that's a really, really cool change of character composition. Here's something that I'm always a big fan of and that is doing something that is slightly off screen. He is a firefighter, he puts on boots. Puts on the boots and then that's it. His second one, they talk about things and he gets up. So what I like about this is that the character does something that he would do and it's not specifically framed for that. Obviously you wanna see the face and he just happens to put on the boots, which kind of reminds me of that Spider-Verse shot where the character closes the door, but it's not super visible. It's kind of just with his leg. I'm just a big fan of that more naturalistic performance where the character does something, but we are focused on this and we just happen to kind of see what's going on off screen. It's not distracting. We still understand what's going on and it's not overly presentational. This section is really neat because I'm always a huge fan of putting characters in sets, using props and having environments and using environments to change specific acting choices or drive certain acting choices. And what I like about this is that if you are putting a character in an environment, right, make sure that the character is aware of the environment of what happened, what's going on, and can you use this to your advantage? So in this case, given that this is all broken, even if you watch this, you'll, you'll hear, uh, you know, stuff is breaking and creaking and a specific sound right as he goes in. And what I like about that is that he is aware of the environment. The sound of the environment influences him and his acting. Because if you just have a walk and opening a door, it can be interesting from a mechanics point of view. But if you, let's say, you know, whatever set you want to add, it could be something where stuff is broken and then there's maybe water dripping out. So as the character starts to open, maybe because of the opening of the door or something happens and the stuff drips on his face, and then he or she can wipe that off. It's, and anything that makes it a bit more interesting 
than just having a character, you know, as I always say, in an empty scene. So having a character in this here and having that, even if it's just through sounds, but it will still be something that triggers more interesting acting choices. And speaking of set, here's another one. What I love about this is that as the characters go into this and they are framed by the door frame, look at what this character does. They talk, kind of exits, and you just see the hand. Yes, he comes in. And it's an interesting thing of A, you can show off two characters, and then you can do something where you only act through a hand, which I think, to me is always very interesting where you can kind of push certain things where a character is kind of cut off and a character can you know, hold a newspaper and flick it or just do this. But also for contrast, what I like is that he's doing this and it comes back in just for a little bit of contrast and change and then out. And then he does his thing here. But something like that to me is again, interesting where it's not just we have two characters and we got to watch them and it might be boring. You can add something a bit more interesting, a bit more contrast, and also do some interesting finger acting. And if you need hand finger acting, watch anything with Harrison Ford. This one I thought was neat because he is talking, but he's not in focus. We are looking at him. So he says something and we did everything right, whatever the line is. And there's just that reaction, the doubt and potential panic. What I like about that is I'm always a big fan of characters reacting and listening to what another character says. Now, this is kind of neat because this could function as your first time lip sync so that you're doing the lip sync for this and because it's out of focus, you won't really pay attention to it, but you can still kind of practice. But the focus is all on this character listening, taking all this in thought process and reacting. This could be something more subtle like that little a swallow, which I'm always a big fan of because that's not really available in rigs. Or you can do something a bit bigger, could be a smile, could be a bigger reaction. But kind of like this idea that you do have a two character shot and you do have technically lip sync, but you can kind of like, hmm, let me just practice and there won't be so much focus because it's actually not in focus. And everything that I'm gonna polish is on this character listening. Here is a classic weight assignment. He is carrying another victim of this accident, but it's not like it's a, a bag of potatoes that he just kind of swings over and, and just kind of lets it fall. Look at how delicate he is with putting it down. We lots of little adjustments there, making sure that the character is not getting hurt despite being already extremely hurt. And even at the end, he had that little bit of a, there's that little extra long hold on the head. Just, I care about this character, make sure that this character doesn't fall onto the ground. But again, if you have something where it's a weight assignment, what is the character ca uh, carrying? Could be, you know, again, a bag that's uneven, so it makes it more challenging to hold, kind of like the way you have it here with a lot of adjustments versus, you know, a big box that, you know, you have very, uh, obviously very strong corners and, and, you know, areas where the character can hold and always have a steady grip. So to me, it's, if you do a weight assignment where the character carries something, think about what is the object, obviously, and that will drive the acting choices and does this character care about what he or she is holding and carrying and putting down or lifting or whatever you know whatever your assignment is this is all about lip sync but to me it's always what's after the lip sync that's also interesting so he kind of threatens this character saying you know i can't make it better for you but i can certainly make it worse and then he realizes all right well this is not Good thing here, I'm not gonna fight this. Then he says, well, do the thing that I'm telling you to do. I'm paraphrasing horribly, by the way. And then he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I like about that is the end. So after he says, yes, that long look. And then that turn, I love how he turns away. I love that actor. That look, blink, and then turn. And he's constantly so kind of relaxed, but also doesn't really give a crap about things attitude in this, despite the horrible incident. But I love this. Technically, so you would have lip sync and then your audio file kind of stops, but you don't really have to stop the shot. What, what if you add one more thing, especially if you start with the shot like this, it's on a weird ending, kind of bookend, you know, this and this. But I love this, I love that you have that and then his long judging look and then turn away. And I love that he doesn't blink either. So like, it's one of those things where, when do you want to blink? Lots of blinks, no blinks, very threatening, just that stare, so good. But the one thing is that, so if this character talks, you know, obviously you got your wave file, your sound file and blah, 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 and you got noise. And if you stop, then you suddenly have just dead silence. So what I would do is I would find files 
that give you room tone, room noise, whatever you want to call this. And actually, I'm going to put a link in the description that has all kinds of stuff. So if you have something where your audio stops here, maybe, you know, this is your, your lip sync. And then you want to add one more thing at the end. That's this reaction here. So what you can do if you have this here, find room noise and then put it over the whole thing. Now, this clip might already have room noise. So you got to find something that's similar and make it very small, you know, in the, the, the volume and then obviously bring it up more here. But I would just pay attention to those kind of things where if, if you do have something where the sound cuts off, so it's not noise, noise, noise and music and then suddenly silence. So anything you can do to smooth out that transition. It's very picky. Uh, this might just be me, but something to potentially uh, pay attention to. But again, I love that. This is such a cool ending to obviously the whole episode is awesome. But as I'm picking out this moment here, it's a good exchange, especially his lines. And again, you don't have to stop when the lip sync stops. You can still add one more thing to give him more character. Is he more menacing or okay? Or suddenly he could smile and make it a creepy smile. Or is he smiling and realize hmm, he actually wasn't that serious. He was just kind of a, uh, he was kind of a, a joke. So whatever you can do, you can change the scene by adding one more thing at the end. Now, this is not potentially something you can do in your reel, but just speaking of that sequence, uh, I love this moment where he tells him, he tells the other guy on the phone, if I'm up, then he's up. But what I like about that editing is that when he says that, uh, if I'm up, he's up, then it cuts to bam. We know exactly, oh, well, that's what he is talking about. And it's a simple thing that, again, you, can, you can't really use on your reel potentially. But what I want to show you is this. He is waiting, and this is your classic waiting assignment. But I like the, the changes, especially like the, the little swings and how the fingers are in. It's a very, you, know, you can barely see this, but that little thing there, a little nervous tap there. He does a bit of a scratch, which is classic, everybody does that. But I love the, the pacing. Then he sees the car, and I also love that. And then he changes straight to a fast little move. And again, the fingers, that little tightening there. Lots of things, even here. Getting ready. Okay, I'm gonna start talking to him and nervous. Just all those little things here. I love that. And it's just, this is your classic waiting assignment uh, that you might get at, you know, at whatever school or that you wanna do at home for yourself and you can do again something where you have a full body shot waiting assignment in terms of i'm going to show this my arms my legs and everything or do this or both right you do full body and then you want to cut to something that's a bit closer for more detail in the face potentially but i just wanted to show this, show this as an example because a waiting assignment is a classic thing that students do at school i mean at least i did it i'm, I'm assuming Nowadays, it's still being done. I think it's a good exercise. But anyway, that's just a, an example I wanted to show. And that's it. Now, speaking of something that students do is, at least to me, I think it's too much gesturing with arms. And then you end up being in a pose where it's two twins and it's just too gestury and too big. And it's always kind of the default thing that, that uh, students usually go or gravitate towards. What I like about this is that he does have, I wouldn't say a gesture, but it's a smaller thing with his fingers. He's somewhat frustrated. He's borderline angry, but he's also a bit nervous. And I like that little tiny thing. Now, sometimes, you know, you shoot this reference and then you start adding this animation and it becomes too poppy and it's weird. And you might not be able to exactly take all of this and use the fingers. But my thing is always, if you start a shot and you act it out, put your arms behind your back and just act it out just with the body and the head. That to me will always be more interesting. And then you will add one or two gestures for contrast and emphasis. But I do like that little thing on the finger and of the hands in general, even here on the second shot, just that, just those little things here. You can show all of this, all of the, the tension, the impatience and everything. And it doesn't have to be a big hand or arm gesture, but just that tiny thing here still adds to the, you know, again, to the panic or to the nervousness that uh, this character goes through or feels. This one is potentially a bit tricky again. Not, I don't know if you can take this directly for your, for a shot as a real shot or for an exercise, but I wanted to show it anyway. I love this guy that comes in. Look at that face. It seems like he's just judging, fam, judging that guy right away or judging the environment. But as this guy stood out to me, I love what he does afterwards. So watch him. He goes, and then walks around. And then he checks the chair. He checks the chair and goes, nope, I'm going to sit somewhere else. Who does that? Who does that? Did the director tell him to do this? This is something that he decided to do. 
I don't think you would see this in an animation movie. This is something so weird and specific actor-wise. I don't know, this is so cool, it cracked me up. But anyway, do you want to do this in your shot, on your reel? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. And again, the same thing with this afterwards, but basically what I'm gonna show you, I just, I just love this whole, this first episode is so good throughout, just everything, again, sound design and acting, but these guys have to brief everybody else. And obviously they're slightly nervous and they wanna make sure that they don't say that everything is horrible. So they're, they're making a joke, mainly the this guy makes a joke. And I love that reaction of this guy. He goes, hey, right, right guys, right guys. And then he goes back to, uh, maybe it's not that funny. But also, I like the reactions of other people. There's a, you know, slight little smile. Maybe he does something, maybe. But I love this. I love that you have that nervous moment here. And like, okay, well, let's diffuse the tension. Let me make a little joke. And that little weasel does, yeah, yeah, yeah. I find this funny, even though it's not funny at all. Anyway, can you use this for a shot? Maybe. I mean, you can argue that in the audio that you chose for your lip sync that it's clear that this character is nervous and is making a, a horrible joke, trying to distract those people from the horrible truth. And maybe you want to put another character as kind of a sidekick. That's kind of that weasel that does this. Actually, why not? This could be an interesting thing if you just take this moment. Imagine it's a longer shot, not this here, but this goes on for a bit longer and that's the end of it. Could be interesting. I just love that guy, such a weasel. Now, I talked about exercise and here's another one. It's not just sitting down, but a standing up is also an exercise. What I like about this is that if you are given the exercise of the character has to stand up, well, you can just do regular stand up, you can just stand up with a prop, but you can also do a stand up with character. And I like that he is so impatient and he's like, eh, waves the guy off. I love how he waves, it's this one, this one thing. So you can almost, Imagine your shot would be this without these guys and you have maybe, whatever, maybe it's a person in the hospital and someone, a uh, nurse, maybe the nurse wants to help him and, and he just waves him off or her. And it's something that just adds one more thing in terms of character. So it's not just body mechanics, but it's also, this is what the character feels. That's his character here in terms of being kind of rude. And then maybe you can have a funny reaction of how this character stops, but I like this. It's a simple thing. It's not huge. So if you do have a sit up assignment, that could just be something that you want to add to give this a bit more flavor. And you can see that the cane is a little wobble there. I mean, obviously it's old, but anyway, I thought this cracked me up when I shot, when I saw it and it made me think of an exercise right away because a stand up is an exercise that you could attempt. Speaking of gestures, I love this here. The soldier tells him that he is waiting for him. I don't know why I'm drawing all this, but I like to draw. So I love this here again. As you can tell, and especially if you watch my channel, I'm a massive fan of long judging looks where you are confident enough in your shot that you take the time for characters to just wait and look and judge and stare. And also what's cool is this. Oh, I love this. He doesn't say get up and it's just kind of a, uh, this bored, let me almost start to look away right before it cuts. And I love that. It's that it kind of a, it's a very simple gesture, right? There's nothing fancy with a, a wrist flick or anything with the fingers or, but it's just that, that look, that pose and just that is such a, I don't want to see you, but I guess, pff, all right, come on, get up. I'm ordering you to get up here. It's such a cool move. Oh, I love this. Would this work in animation? This might even be too simple. You never know. Sometimes stuff in live action works. Then you put this in your animation, it feels like, well, did you forget to animate the wrist or the fingers? You wanna add some contrast in there? It doesn't always translate, but I wanted to show it anyway. And also this, and you don't really hear the, you know, what they're saying, they're whispering. So this would be kind of a pantomime thing. And I love that, I love that. He's he's already seeing him, but he does that extra, eh, stare, no blink, eh, so good. This is a longer shot, I'm including the subtitles so you can read what they're talking about or especially what he is listening to. And I love this too in terms of reactions. I love that as he listens to and he, he realizes what he what he just heard about the ranking per hour, there's no blink, right? There's, there's, there's almost no darting here, just kind of listens. Then he realizes, wait, what? And it's that little anticipation where that you start with the eyebrows and then he goes, wait a minute, and well, I think this is pretty significant. He gets cut off throughout the sequence, he gets cut off all the time. And it's a simple thing here too with his lips together and this the, 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 the lifting of the head. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm a massive fan of head accents. So you could just leave the character always in this pose, but I love that little change through there. 
But the main thing I want to show you is just, it's mainly his eyes and the blinking. When does he blink? When does he not blink? Now he's being told, he's being interrupted again and being told, you know, what he's supposed to do here. And you can see that little, little squint there, but not that much blinking. And then he realizes, wait, what? And you can see again, the widening with the eyes and the brows going up. And then he just, he processes what he just heard. And you can look at the blinks, lots of links, lots of processing and wait, 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 whoa, whoa, what's going on here? And again, Think about that as you do your shot. When do you blink? When do you not blink? Do you have something where the character just kind of listens and is not blinking? That makes him very concentrated or maybe kind of spaced out and actually not really listening. Or something where like, wait, did I just hear this? Oh, I got to process what I just heard. And then you got more blinks like that. That could be something that's nervous or something where there's just so much going on that he just heard that he has to, you know, take a second before he answers. Lots of good stuff. And the funny thing is, if you have a two character audio, maybe you want to be fancy with your um, audio editing, but maybe the original shot is two characters talking, but you eliminate one. And whenever that character talks, you put an audio filter on it. So it sounds like he's on the phone or she. And then you can concentrate on just one character on the phone, listening to the other character. And it's all about listening, reacting, and having fun just with those moments of, when do I blink? When do I not blink? When do I put in, uh, eye darts? It, do I have a bigger reaction? Do I move my, my body with a reaction? It's even like something like this that I love. So again, if you do have a two character dialogue, you don't have to have both characters in the scene. You can actually have none of the audio performed on screen. It's one character listening to two characters. So you have this constant back and forth of who I'm listening to or what I showed before where one character is blurry. It's all about the character listening and reacting. So this could be something where, like I said, the foreground is blurry, but you can do some sort of lip sync and it's kind of adds some balance to the composition. You want to do a character shot that way. Or like the last thing that I looked at where you take one audio and you tweak it. So it sounds like someone's on the phone or maybe behind a wall. And then you just have a character listening and then do the lip sync and reacting. And then that constant back and forth could be really interesting. So you're not always, you don't have to stick to, if you hear two voices to portray and animate two characters. There you go. That's it. Episode one. I will hopefully see you next week for episode two and so on, because there's so much to talk about, so much to show next week, lots of stuff with props. But anyway, I hope you're gonna watch the show. And if you have, let me know in the comments, let me know what you liked or did not like about the show. And if you watch this until the very end, as always, I appreciate it. You know, I am very appreciative of the time that you take to watch this. And if you like this, you can give us a like. Also, if you think that all that stuff is interesting and you wanna use that in your shots, you can sign up for my workshops where we can talk about that stuff and we can work together on your shots where we can kind of implement those acting choices and take your shots to the next level if you want to. My signups are always open for my workshops and that is it. If you don't want to miss all that stuff that I'm posting, then don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button for all the notifications if you want to get notified about all my uploads because I do upload almost every day. And that is it. If you're still here, you're a champ and I will see you tomorrow and next week.